Tschüsschen. Hey YouTube, Dr. Tschüsschen84 here and welcome to Q&A number 118. Let's kick this off. Um, right, first question is from Nordic Wolf. If you could be all five protagonists for a span of six months, or be one for one month, what would you choose and why? Um, I don't know if I could be all six for half a year, um, but if I could be one, that would be easy. Yugi, because, well, he's the king of games and the original Dark Magician user, and I myself am a big fan of Dark Magician. Um, I mean, that's really the only reason, to be honest. Um, I mean, it would also be nice having the option of uh, being Jaden as well, and you say, but. Um, I think Yugi's the only one I'd pick. Um, oh, and then there was another comment regarding Sword Soul uh, from Spark Tech. I know it's not a question. Uh, <laughs> the comments to Webbers were just me being cheeky. I can understand the burn being very annoying in time. Y yeah, um, there was something about Sword Soul and Zombie Horde that I actually forgot to mention last week as I was going over it. Um, Regarding Sword Soul, it's not just um, Long Yun for Game that's annoying about Sword Soul, it's also the fact that it's a deck that does too many things that don't let anyone play the game. Like, it OTKs and it makes a board of negates, like, including Baron, and um, yeah, I don't like decks that do that. Um, as I said, um, th that's decks like that are the main reason why I don't play in normal tournaments anymore. Um, and as for Zombie Horde, well, there's more to the hatred for that deck than Zombie World messing with types. It's also just Doom King Baldurok existing and just negating half a deck and being a cheap shot banish card and a banish card that doesn't target, which is bullshit. Um, yeah, <clears throat> hence why both decks are among my top 20 hated decks of all time. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to put that out there, uh, just because I missed it out. Um, next questions are from Matt and Alison Welch, uh, who has some Christmas themed questions. 1. What is your favourite Christmas movie? Matt loves Christmas Vacation. I'm not familiar with that one. And I myself love uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original cartoon and the Jim Carrey version. That's a good question. Actually, no. I would say Home Alone, you know, the original one. Uh, definitely. I absolutely love that movie. Um, yeah, it was such a brilliant, iconic classic from my childhood. Um, the second one was great too, um, but I loved that one even more. Um, it was just awesome. Um, in fact, I even remember seeing uh, adverts for the movie, like way back in the day. Um, uh, but I didn't actually see it for the first time until, like, uh, 1994, uh, which was interesting, like, four years after it first came out. Um, so, yeah, that answers that question. Um, and I feel like Emma's favourite Christmas one would be The Holiday, since that's one of her top two favourite movies, just in general, alongside Titanic. Uh, two, what is your favourite Christmas food? Again, that's a really tough one. I mean, it's a toss-up between mashed potato, turkey, and pigs in blankets. Um, 
I, uh, even if it's not Christmas, I could just eat those all day, um, provided I had the stomach capacity. Um, the, oh, but it's really hard to decide between one particular one. Um, uh, yeah, it's just any of those. Uh, three. Do you think one day we, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh will get a Christmas-themed archetype? It's a possibility. I mean, we do have a Halloween-themed one, um, which is Ghost Tricks, um, and I feel like maybe it would be pendulum-based and would um, be based off ghost beef and mild turkey. Uh, two of my favourite pendulums, um, just because ghost beef says that uh, it's uh, the spirit of Christmas dinner, and uh, I forgot what the flavour text on mild turkey was. Oh yeah, the taste of victory will bowl you over. Uh, yeah, um, so I guess mild turkey is both a Thanksgiving card and a Christmas card. Um, but yeah, anyway, I feel like um, these two cards could be expanded upon and have them get support, um, and then it would be sort of Christmassy, and maybe throw in um, some stuff to support Santa Claus as well, um, yeah, the mini kaiju. Um, so. Anyway, yeah, this was a longer answer than necessary, but I can definitely see Konami doing that at some point. Four, what was your favourite Christmas memory? Ooh, again, that's a tough one. Um, there's a lot of fond ones. Um, hmm. Favourite Christmas memory? I don't know. Um, yeah. uh, I'm not sure I have one. Um, I know there's some very memorable ones, like uh, one year when I woke up at two in the morning and then couldn't get back to sleep. Um, which was rather annoying because um, there was a plan to just get up and be opening presents by 8am <laughs> those were the days um, and then another one was when I uh, stayed up almost all night playing Gears of War 1 um, now the reason behind this was because um, I asked for Gears of War 2 at the time and um, I really wanted to finish the first one um, so that I could understand what was going on with the second one. Um, either that or... I, don't know, I wasn't sure if data from the first game was needed in any way for the second but uh, pro I guess it doesn't, but I just wasn't sure. Um, uh, yeah. Hmm. It's hard. Um, I, I wish I thought about this like before I started recording. Uh, why do I have to be badly prepared for Q and A's? Um, hmm. Yeah, so I'm just trying to think of every single Christmas um, I've had in my life and look back and try and think what stood out the most. Hmm. No, um, I, I can't actually
actually think of one that's a red hot favourite. Um, although I anticipate that it will probably be this Christmas because uh, Emma will be here and um, this is the first time ever that um, I'll be spending Christmas Day with a romantic partner. We can't wait. Five. Out of all the Christmas gifts you have received over the years, what was your most favourite gift? I'm not sure if this question was asked before, so forgive us. Um, no, I don't think it has been asked, so you're good. Uh, wow, favourite gift. Um, yeah, that's a really tough one. Um, Um, I would say it's a it's a toss up between three presents, one I got when I was a kid, and two from two thousand and seven. Um, because back in nineteen ninety five, I got an action figure of uh, the White Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, Tommy. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, it was a favourite from back then, although, um, one problem, uh, there was one problem, um, you see, it had the, uh, shall we say, the tiger shield, which, um, is in two different halves, and clips onto the upper body just like that. Um, and rather annoyingly, sometime later, I somehow lost the top half. That was so annoying. Um, I had to basically make my own one out of a piece of paper, like draw it and cut it out and sellotape it on. Typical. Hold on. Oh, excuse me. Um, and as for what I got in 2007, um, I got the Rainbow Dragon collectible tin, and I'm pretty sure I did get the Crystal Wee Sapphire Pegasus tin as well. Um, yeah, because at the time I was making Crystal Beasts. Um, in fact, it was some point afterwards that um, that I built the deck for the very first time. Um, but of course I was having trouble getting hold of Sapphire Pegasus and Rainbow Dragon because they were very tough to get back then um, and I'm grateful that I got their respective tins that year. So, yeah, they're the favourite ones that I can think of. Now we're going back to Spark Man. Uh, five questions from him. One. What Yu-Gi-Oh card would make the best pet? I think I would say Melfi Catty, um, just because it's my favourite Melfi, and um, yeah, yeah, one of the cat monsters that I like playing. Um, but it's hard to pick which cat card is my favourite, but. Um, yeah, I was also thinking of Karibo or Wind Karibo, um, but I, but since like I like cats and miss having a cat around the place, I would pick a, a, a Melfi Catty. Two. What is your favourite card art in Yu-Gi-Oh? Again, that's a really tough question. Wow, there's so many tough questions this week. Um, a favourite card art? Uh, I think I'm just going to pick Dark Magician's anime artwork. It's like the best one I can think of as well. It's my favourite card and... Um, it's just hard to think of anything else. 3. Have you ever felt burnt out by Yu-Gi-Oh? 
I know I have, and have taken short breaks from the game over the years. Um, well, not really. Um, I mean, maybe I kind of did after the UK Nationals in 2011, as, um, just because I didn't do very well and only won one match um, with Legendary Hero. Um, and the, I think I guess for a, just a few hours I kind of felt burnt out but just got over it. Um, other than that, the closest was um, all the times that I quit playing in Hugo tournaments over the years. Um, the fact that I've quit multiple times is ridiculous, I know, but um, but obviously there was that time in June 2015 where I thought about quitting tournaments, but then changed my mind because I really wanted to play Masked Heroes in a tournament, but but then the first time I did properly quit tournaments was in September that year as well, just because I was fed up of the meta and the format. Um, I don't know why I let people talk me back into coming back to current format tournaments and why um, I felt the need to make all these temporary returns. Like, I wish I'd just stayed in tournament retirement after the first time I quit. Um, and now this obviously end up being expanded to um, expanded to pass format ones um, and 2.5 I haven't played in 2.5, but um, but what annoys me about 2.5 is there are decks that I hate that are still allowed to be played. I mean, Naturia's Trap Tricks, uh, Invoked Shadol. Um, why is bullshit like that even allowed? I don't even know why trap tricks are even allowed, considering that deck is meta, or at least it's been seeing a lot of competitive play throughout the year. How the hell is that archetype not banned from 2.5 and the minor league? It's irritating and toxic as fuck. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um... Uh, yeah, um, like I said before, Edison just doesn't appeal to me because because of Glad's Sabres, Macro, Frog Monarch, and Chain Burn. I mean, getting annoyed by Chain Burn was just the final straw. I just don't want to deal with any of those decks. In fact, I saw in the Edison tournament last week that there were two Gladiator Beast players. And it's just like, no thank you, I've been bullied enough by glads over the years. Um, and then of course, Goat became unappealing, because I'm fed up of Ring of Destruction for game, and fed up of having cards ripped out my hand by Duo, and fed up of having my monsters popped by Nobleman of Cross out. I mean, I'm still willing to play those formats casually, but I'm just so done. Just, um, but yeah, besides the minor league, um, none of the tournaments at TTR just appeal to me, to be honest. Um, But, well, I guess it's not really Yu-Gi-Oh that left me feeling burning out. It's just bullshit, unfair cards and decks that just don't let me play. Um, 
Uh, and of course I've been feeling some burnout ever since last night. Um, and now because of Ash Exosisters and Dino well not really Exosisters but Dynamorphia Rexum was annoying me. Um uh, that's what's uh, putting me off wanting to play in the minor league anymore. Um, I mean, yeah, they... Yeah, certain cards and decks will be banned as uh, the custom ban list is updated, but... Um, but what's really the point of Bullshit like Ash is still allowed. Um, anyway, yeah, that pretty much answers that question. Uh, four, have you ever played other game, other games, and saving for the money for the uh, blah, 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 saving money for the wedding aside, would you ever be interested in trying other games? Um. Well, there is, of course, Cards Against Humanity, and that's what she said. Um, if anything, I don't play those games enough. Right, yeah, they're not TCG card games, but... Um, but they're the only other card games that appeal to me. Um, and the, there was one time where I did have one game of Magic the Gathering, as... Um, one of my nieces, or well, step niece, but still a niece nonetheless, um, plays Magic the Gathering, or or did back then. I don't know if she still plays now, but um, but yeah, she came to visit um, one Christmas, and um, me and uh, my younger brother had a go at it. Um, and I was kind of struggling a little and didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so I was just basically talked for it and um, I, I managed to win somehow. Um, beginner's luck, I guess. Um, plus there was one time where I thought about getting into it like at the end of 2010 and start of 2011 but just didn't. Um, um, but no, it just, it doesn't appeal to me, really, um, and like I keep saying, I really don't want to get into any other card games, um, and of course, as you know, I'm just sick and tired of people trying to get me to play them, uh, especially Digimon, um, because, yeah, um, I just don't have the time, patience, and money to get into other card games. Um, but to answer um, the other part of the question, would I be interested in trying other games? Um, if they were video games, that's a different story, and um, uh, depending on, on what it is, it's something I would uh, get into. Um, because let's face it, there's no other TCGs that interest me. And last question from him. A non-Yu-Gi-Oh question. Favourite pieces of music from video games? I think they'd basically be um, any of the theme songs from uh, Sonic Adventure and Sonic Heroes. Um, it's definitely great songs from those. Um, just any of them are all good. Um, yeah, I could listen to those all day. Um, plus, um, the end credit music from Sonic Unleashed is something I do like. Um, even though I still say it was the worst fucking Sonic game ever, the end credit music was great. It was incredible. It's the only good thing about the entire game. Uh, 
Um, oh, then again, there were some uh, excellent. Uh, uh, there was excellent music from uh, Sonic Three. Um, in fact, I particularly. Uh, well, I did like the end credit music from that as well, but I also liked the Act One boss battle music, which uh, I, uh, which, as far as I'm aware, was done by Michael Jackson himself. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Um, uh, I don't like how it was changed in. Um, Sonic and Knuckles slash Sonic Free and Knuckles. Um, I preferred the the one from Sonic Free. Just saying. And the last few questions are from Webber's Five. He does have two here, but he um, did indirectly um, ask me one in his last Q and A episode. Um, I submitted a question saying um, how would what well, how would he react if someone made a mixture of um, Dark Magician and Endymion, um, and then he asked me how I'd react. Um, I think my reaction would be something like, "Oh God, this is an abomination of a Dark Magician deck." Um, as because yeah, as everyone knows, I absolutely hate Endymion because it's also a deck that does nothing but OTK and uh, make a board of negates to stop anyone from playing. Um, and um, I feel like it would be even tougher to beat with Dark Magician cards because um, yeah, you also have. A Dark Magician, a Dragon Knight protecting the back row, whether it's Circle, Eternal Soul, um, one of the Floodgate Field spells, or the Pendulum Scales, um, and Magician's right hand, of course, um, as well as Circle banishing stuff, um, and then, of course, a Dragoon being a thing. Um, uh, that would just be horrible. Um, I mean, Dragoon aside, I think that would probably be the only variant of Dark Magician that I absolutely hate. Um, I mean, yeah, there were the times where I made Dark Magic Swarm and Dark Magic Lockdown, two variants that I regret building and wish I'd never played, but... We don't talk about those. Um, anyway, as for the official questions, starting with question one, what do you? Bleh, sorry, what would you think if Konami made a fusion between Endymion and Dark Magician? I am assuming, of course, you mean Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic, because. Um, because uh, if it was the original any uh, Endymion, you know, the Master Magician, I mean, I'd play that in a heartbeat and um, would absolutely love it and uh, and play the original Endymion and the fusion with ease. Um, if it was Mighty Master, um, that would complicate things. Um, like. I'd probably be hesitant to play it. Um, mind you, um, I could do a workaround, um, provided, of course, um, uh, the fusion materials specifically say Dark Magician and Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic. I would just either use a fusion substitute instead, or bring it out with the Eye of Tamias. Um, just so that way I don't have to play Mighty Master. Um, or if I did decide to play just one, I wouldn't even use it for its pendulum effect or monster effect. It would only be there as fusion material to make this fusion. Um, and 
Yeah, well, it would be seen as hypocritical if I did play that in a deck. I think as long as I'm not summoning it or using it as a pendulum scale or and using its pendulum effect, I would not consider it hypocritical. Um, but then again, like I said, I think I'd rather just go with the idea and um, just use something like King of the Swamp or Eye of Tamias to bring the fusion out. And the last question, too. Skilled Dark Magician uses spell counters to summon Dark Magician. Endymion uses spell counters, therefore Dark Magician is an Endymion card, right? Question inspired by uh, Peter's debate on Kerosene and Red Bull. I don't know who that is, but fair enough. Um, well, I'm going to say no, or at least that's my opinion, uh, for a number of reasons. Like, one, Dark Magician and Skilled Dark Magician came out long before any Endymion cards even existed. Um, uh, the other thing is... Um, not every spell counter card is played in Endymion. Um, uh, not Skilled White Magician, and not even War Magical Library. Um, uh, yeah, that's a reason I only just thought of. But the other reason I was going to say is that they're two different archetypes. They have, well, yeah, having spell counters is something they have in common, but other than that, they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Um, so, well, so while others might say yes, um, whether it's for a joke or they're being serious, I, for one, don't consider Dark Magician an Endymion card. Um, that's the other thing is... Um, the artwork on all the Endymion cards is more fancy than uh, the Dark Magician and Dark Magician support artwork. So I mean, that's something I will give to Endymion. Um, I mean, while I hate uh, Mighty Master itself, I do like its artwork, and you know, the artwork on all the Endymion cards is beautiful and amazing. That I will say. Uh, anyway, that's it for questions in this episode. Thanks a lot for your guys' questions. And if you've got any other questions you want to ask me, post them in the comments down below. And remember, I do these episodes every Tuesday afternoon or evening UK time. So be sure to get your questions in before then so that you don't miss out. Thanks again. Stay safe. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Dark Magician YouTube channel.